Okay, Coke, we're now going to fit our tri spark electronic ignition. Okay, so it uh, comes from Australia, made in Australia, and it comes in this little box. And we're fitting the tri spark electronic ignition system, and it all that this particular model all fits here where the old points and that used to be. Some of the earlier models like i've got on my bikes they have a separate black box that you have to put under the seat and they are still available i think you can still request that model if you want uh, the advantage of this is of course it, it's completely like invisible that that's the entire unit it's under there just like the points used to be no one can tell whether you've got electronic condition or not uh, and you don't have to you don't have to worry about finding somewhere to put the black box However, some people claim that these new uh, models aren't quite as reliable as the old ones. I don't know. Um, I think they're fine, but um, okay, just so you know. Right, so what have we got? Came in the box, we've got instructions, we've got a little extra instruction thing, which we'll look at in a minute. Uh, we've got all the connectors, and we've even got the bolt to remove the old... Um, uh, advance and retard unit if it's still in there and so on we've got the actual unit itself with the wires and then we've got like the back plate the rotor as it's called that actually sort of spins around and sort of fires the uh, fires the unit right um, so first thing we've got this is like worth noting um, this is like a little extra disclaimer do not ever connect the red, white, or yellow wires to positive power. This will blow up your ignition. They, those wires go to the terminal. So it's like, obviously some people have done that. So this is like an extra bit that's been added on. It also, it also says, and I'm surprised at this, the ignition will be damaged if the wrong coils are used. Three 12 volt Lucas style cylindrical coils with a minimum ohm primary resistance 3.5 are recommended for the best results so that is a standard coil so if you've got standard coils you know you're just you're just changing to electronic ignition that's fine a bias resistor must be installed if using six volt coils now i'm, I'm confused by that because i'm not really an electrician now i understood that a bias resistor is used normally with electric start so that when you um, press the electric start, all the electricity tends to go, a huge amount of power goes to the starter motor, and often there's not enough left to uh, actually fire the ignition. So I always understood that a bias resistor held back some power, diverted some of the power from the starter motor to the coils to make sure that it did have enough to start. But this is saying, obviously, a bias resistor must be installed with six volt coil so obviously that's a bit beyond my ken i don't know why that's needed but obviously it is use resistor spark plug caps or resistor type spark plugs or well, i think uh, just about all spark plug caps and plugs are resistor these days <laughs> you said famously now and this is another interesting one this is interesting podtronics single phase voltage regulator don't use it is what they're saying the podtronic single phase regulator uh, is not suitable for use with tri spark electronic ignition due to electrical noise interference this voltage regulator emits now that's interesting because that's a very common uh, regulator uh, rectifier um, uh, that is fitted as an upgrade to a lot of bikes um, I, and so they're saying if you do have one you can either fit a filter for electrical noise reduction, part number, blah, 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 or change it. I've actually got the, um, I've actually got the TriSpark regulator rectifier combined unit uh, on my, on my bikes, but they, it is very expensive. Now that's just by chance. I didn't know about this problem before. Okay. But that's definitely worth noting. Right. Uh, then we come to the, uh, actual uh, instructions here uh, which are pretty comprehensive and um, so it, 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 you know, it tells you what to do um, 
okay and most importantly it gives you very clear instructions for how to remove your old points and um, advanced retard unit if uh, you know if required so that's uh, you know which is good then uh, it tells us how to fit the actual how to fit the actual unit and obviously we're coming on to that and then it uh, comes to the wiring diagram and we'll probably come back to this so it does say installation for positive earth and it also gives one for negative earth because some people will have, have found that their bikes have been changed to negative earth over the years standard bikes are all positive earth okay so this is standard and it is pretty simple wiring <laughs> there'll be some people swearing at me now okay the thing to remember about the tri spark is that it fires each cylinder uh, separately so uh, one at a time something like um, boyer that's called wasted spark and it fires all three cylinders all the time um, so the other it fires one cylinder the other two get a spark but they won't fire because of course they're not on the compression stroke but it fires all three at the same time tri spark it just fires one at a time like standard normal point ignition does okay we'll have a we'll have a look at this now we might come back to it so once we fitted this unit which we're going to do in a minute um things to note um the green is negative okay so that is going to go to power from the ignition switch now any just about i'm going to qualify that just about any and every white wire white wire on a trident is live from the ignition so i think it's like blue and brown i think from the battery is it blue and brown? i think so then when it gets to the ignition switch anything that's live after the ignition switch is white so this green wire okay you would actually fit you'd actually find a white wire so that means it's not permanently live if you connected it straight to the battery it'd be permanently live and so even when you turn the ignition on it'd still be going you turn connect this green wire to a white any white wire so you probably cut into the you can cut into a white wire or you can find a connection somewhere so you just basically find any white wire and you should be okay then the the um the brown wire is uh, earth so you need to find a good earth now it doesn't have to go to the battery terminal as long as it is a good earth so that means you know some part of the engine part of the frame but it's not going to be um paint and rust and things isn't going to get in the way right so you could connect it straight to the battery but as long as you make sure that it's a good earth and i would have a basic um sort of circuit tester just to check that you have a good earth because from my experience one of the main reasons these don't work is because the there's not a good earth then uh, you connect the um, yellow wire to timing side red wire to middle coil white wire to primary coil okay so um so i was going to say okay a few things uh, a few things about that um sorry which which is which so you can work out which which coil is which simply by following the ht lead to the spark plug and you may, make sure you know whether you've got the timing side uh cylinder or whichever okay um number one number two just to be confusing i don't want to confuse you too much but the original wiring for points is very similar to this except the white or well, black and white used to go to the timing and black and yellow used to go to primary and black and red would go to the middle so with with this new system like the, the yellow and white have kind of reversed and that also brings me back to why I qualified my statement that just about every white wire is um, uh, live from the ignition because of course here's a white wire that isn't because <laughs> it's coming out of the ignition and unfortunately it happens to be the same color but there we go right so we want so uh don't get confused by that 
if you also i don't know one thing that this probably doesn't say that if you're converting to electronic ignition your condensers are completely wired out as well okay um it says here bias resistor that's only if you're using six volt coils okay so if you're using standard 12 just ignore that so we got the yellow to the negative coil timing red negative coil middle white negative coil primary and then uh, alive and uh, yeah okay sorry um, I'm not alive that'll be an earth this is colored blue on this diagram but of course virtually well all the earth wires on a trident are red so again this a bit can be a bit confusing so this is an earth wire which should be a red earth wire okay I think they colored it blue on here because unfortunately again confusingly this wire from the ignition is also red but again all red wires apart from that one on a trident are earth wires so um, again you see we've got the earth there and we need good earths again from the coils uh, so again just like this earth from the actual unit you need to make sure it's a good earth uh, I think I think uh, I've mentioned everything there the other thing to mention it does it does go over in the book uh, in the instructions uh, it, it sometimes re refers to the coils and the cylinders as number one and or but it always qualifies it for clarity saying timing side on a on a trident um, the if you sit on the bike facing the handlebars then on your left is number three cylinder the middle is obviously number two and the right hand timing side is number one okay so because that creates an awful lot of confusion but luckily in these instructions if it says number one or whatever it also then qualifies its timing side you know so you don't get confused which is good because obviously that does create a lot of confusion because you know sitting on a bike facing the handlebars you'd expect it to go one two three but it doesn't it goes one two three it goes right to left not left to right okay uh i know it's a lot of talk but um there we go so um i've gone through a lot of talk because when i said we're going to install electronic ignition and we are going to put it in there but of course i haven't got the rest of the bike so i'm not going to be making all these connections oh yeah one other thing one other problem i do foresee uh is that the uh, wires these wires are much thinner than the wires uh, that you'll get on a um on your wiring loom uh, they'll work fine because this only takes a very very small amount of power but that could create problems in uh, wiring those up you know the crimping them into the connectors and things like that or if you're going to join the loom with an existing sort of bullet it's difficult to crimp a bullet onto there and so on so i can foresee that being a problem these small wires difficult to make a good connection so where are we yeah i've only got that one so i've got um uh jeff jeff mitchell uh a while ago recommended these and these and i'm trying to see if there's a maker's mark or whatever and i'm afraid there isn't but these are a genuine ratchet crimp right so they're actually a ratchet they don't they're not like pliers so it ratchets can you hear that ratchet going it ratchets and you put the crimp in the top there and you keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing until and then when it's fully fully done up then it will let go when it's half done it won't let go and it's only when that crimp is absolutely yeah, fully made that it'll open again so one of these ratchet crimps Right, there's loads of these i've bought loads by mistake thinking they were ratchet and they're not unfortunately there's no uh, maker's mark on that but um yeah you want you know if you're going to make these connections here to these wires you want to be absolutely sure you're getting a good connection or if you're connecting those to a bullet even more of a nightmare to get a good crimp if you're using crimp bullets okay right i think that's enough chat definitely whoops fingers in the way um so we're going to get on and start putting this uh in the engine 
Okay, so uh, we're now ready to fit the actual unit to the engine. So the first thing we've got to do, we're following the instructions here. It's all in the instructions, but I'm going to talk you. On. It's all in the instructions. I'm going to talk you through it now. So we need to set number one cylinder, which is the time inside. That has to be uh, at 38 degrees before top dead center on the compression stroke. So the first thing we do is to turn the engine over until we get number one cylinder, this cylinder, at top dead center on the compression stroke. Now, it is very important, do not forget that this is a four stroke engine so that the piston will be at the top twice, but only once on the compression stroke. So if you just turn it over and wait and see the piston at the top, you may be looking at the wrong stroke. So the advice is, and I've done this just to show you really, <laughs> taken the, the rocker box covers off. And so when the, um, uh, I've got this uh, piston at top dead center, you might, yeah, you can just see it down in there. Yeah. So when both valves are fully closed and you know they're fully closed because there's play on both tappets, a bit bigger, a bit more on the exhaust. Okay, so I now know that the engine, this piston is top dead center on the compression stroke, both valves closed. Okay, now what I need to do then is I need to turn the engine backwards to 38 degrees before top dead center, which is when uh, the ignition is fully advanced. So, because it's, it never ceases to amaze me, amaze me, but how much before the piston gets to the top, the actual um, spark plug fires. You know, you, you think the piston gets to the top, then it fires and pushes down. But the thing's going so fast that you actually have this spark before the piston reaches the top. So that by the time it's reached the top, the explosion has just reached the crown and pushes it down. Uh, it's amazing how fast these things go. Right, so I need to now turn, having turned the engine forwards, I've got it top dead center, both valves closed. I now need to turn the engine backwards to 38 degrees before top dead center. So I've got, I've taken, in my case, normally you would use the back wheel, put the bike in gear, if the engine's in the frame, obviously, and then use the back wheel to turn the engine over backwards. But I haven't got that, so I've actually, taken the primary chain case back off just to make and then i've got the spanner on the um on the engine pinion and uh i'm just i'm just trying to work out which is backwards now there we go that way so i'm going to turn this backwards until i see the timing mark oh, I can't, have i got enough light there oh. I think you can maybe just wipe it. Oh, rubbish, rubbish light. Uh, well, hopefully, yeah, there we go. Oh, hopefully, you'll see the uh, timing mark appear. I'm just trying to, uh, well, it's there. What I'll do is I'm going to get it right. I've turned it, I've turned the engine over backwards, and I've now oh, get some light on there. There. So, okay. So, I've got the. Um, Timing mark just about in the center. It's not perfect in the center, but I know it's roughly 38 degrees now. So what I've done then is here, this, this nut here is a timing plug. It doesn't actually do anything else. It serves no purpose apart from when you remove it and then you put in this timing plug as it's called. I'm just gonna have a look in so I know whether I'm a bit, you know, I'm pretty spot on. There. And what happens is you screw that in there and then you put this plunger in and what it is there's actually a hole in the crankshaft that this plunger oh look at that, i've got it in it's just about exactly the right place that amazing yeah 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 uh so that if that uh hole i'm going to take it back out because it's too good okay so what i would do if I just turn it uh, too far the wrong way, let's have a look. I'm just going to move the crankshaft. I've just moved it, you know, a quarter of an inch, right? 
that won't go in now because there's no hole. So when I have the crankshaft in exactly the right position, then, is it about there? There it is. Then that plug goes in. And I, the engine is now locked at 38 degrees, top dead center on number one cylinder. Now, so that's a great bit of kit. But if you haven't got one, it's only cheap, but let's say you haven't got one, all you need to do is do exactly what we've done but just turn the engine so that the timing mark here, this line here, is in the center of that aperture as far as possible. Because when we've done all this, we're going to time it on a strobe anyway. So you can get it near as damn it on that. And then, you, uh, and even using this, we're gonna use a strobe anyway. So anyway, that's what we do. It's so important to get that right. The other thing to notice is that the crankshaft is drilled for this plug will go in and there's 38 degrees top dead center, before top dead center for each cylinder. So, you know, don't just turn it and think, I'll just turn it until that goes in, it's bound to be on the right place. No, because it's time for different cylinders. So again, or rather it's drilled for different cylinders. So, you, you know, there's three different holes that this plug will go in. So that's the right hole for this cylinder, 38 degrees before top dead center. Okay, so it's really, really important to get that right, obviously, because if that's wrong, everything else is going to be completely out. So that's what you need to do. Okay, so now we're going to fit the uh, going to fit the actual unit. Okay, I've got the uh, camera as best I can. Hopefully, you can see something. So the first thing I've got is this. Uh, what was they call it? The base plate. Okay, let's have a look. They, oh, they call it. Uh, oh, they call it a rotor. Okay, a rotor, and basically it's just got a bit of metal there. Whoops, one metal there, and that's the trigger. I think. Basically, when it when it goes round, that's what triggers. That's what triggers the sparks. So as it passes the back of the of the stator, it's probably got magnets in it, and it will it will trigger. The actual spark each time so this is the trigger now we know we know that this is now set 38 degrees before top dead center so it says in the instructions to fit this with this metal trigger 22 millimeters 22 millimeters center to center from this to that bolt hole okay so i need to measure put it on it just slots in there and then I need to measure 22 millimeters and, uh, and then I'm going to bolt it in. So there we go. I don't know if I can, you'll be able to see this, but I have measured 22 mil as down as I can get it, close as I can get it from the center of that hole to the center of that. And that should be the right position. So then they've given me these bolts. Oops. And I open the packet eventually. Always good to do these things live on camera, not. It's a little Allen, Allen bolt. And then we're going to put that in there and that screws into the exhaust camshaft and holds the, uh, holds it all in place. So I'm just going to see if I can actually screw that in. There we go. Right, I'm going to get it nearly there, which is perhaps what I should have done before. And then measure it again, because I think that's moved, doesn't it? I think it's moved very slightly, is it? No, that's still that's still just about spot on 22 mil. So I'm going to try and hold that still. Stop it from turning. Whilst I tighten the centre and bolt up which is screwing into the camshaft the exhaust camshaft and in so doing is screwing this um, rotor is that what they call it yeah screwing this rotor into the camshaft and holding it still okay there we go now let's say at some point we decide we should actually bolt it in the wrong place 
If I now unscrew that, this rotor won't come out because I've screwed it in. It's a taper fitting into the end of the camshaft, and so I can't get it out. So if I did want to take this out again, because I've got it in the wrong place or whatever, just don't take that bolt back out and then put this thicker bolt in, just like you do for the advanced, the advanced retard unit. Screw that in. This will then screw into the rotor, not into the camshaft. And then screw that in until it touches the, the camshaft. And then give it a whack with a hammer. And that will break the seal and that will come out. So they actually supply that bolt is really what I'm saying, which is handy. If you ever need, hopefully I won't need to take that back out again. Let's have a look. I'll remeasure it. I think I'm pretty damn close to 22 mil there. But I'm pretty, I'm pleased with that, spot on. So, so that should be spot on. Of course, when all this is finished, we can check the timing statically, but we're also going to use a strobe uh, when the engine's running. Okay, so we've done that. Now, the next thing we've got to do is, this rotor should be about two millimeters below the level of this sort of, um, ring here it's cleaning for a start it's got some polish on it from where the casing was polished yeah so uh yeah it's just some leftover polish from the out you know because these cases as you can probably see have been machine polished but let's come back with a little bit of polish left on that inside let's get rid of that i'll not be in the way but obviously just want to get rid of it right Sorry, this rotor should be two millimeters below the level of this rim here. Okay, because when we screw this on, it needs to be a two millimeter air gap between that and the back of this plate. More than that, and it won't trigger. Nearer than that, it might actually start touching the plate, if you don't want. So what have they given us for this? So they've given us a little plastic strip, which I, I find useful, but infuriating as well. So this plastic strip fits across like that. And then you can see how far off the uh, rotor is from this back plate. Now I think that's okay, but it does look, actually, it does look a bit low to me. It looks more than two mil. I know you probably can't see that, but it's good that they supply this. So you put that on there and you need to measure the gap between that and this edge. Let me see what it says. Do I think that's a bit more than two mil? It should go in easily. Check it. It's two mil. See diagram on page eight. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Two millimeters of these notes. Mm -hmm. Good. What it doesn't tell me is how to adjust it. If it's more than two mil, it says it should be two mil. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Uh, but it, it says yeah, and there's a little diagram pointing out it's got to have a two mil hair gap. But I can't see how I'm supposed to change it if uh, it's not. Mm, okay, well, I'm going to pass on that because, you know, I don't know how would you change that. It says make sure it's two mil, but if it's not, what do you do? I mean, if, if it's too far out, you could probably put little washers underneath there to, to move this back plate out, but I don't see how you can move it in. Move the back plate in. So there we go. So it's staying, it's staying like that. Okay, then we've got the actual box of tricks itself okay with the, uh, with all the wiring all the wiring malarkey on it so uh, we're going to fit that first thing we need to do is to feed the wire down through this hole which is a hole that gets out of the timing case comes out the back here and means that there's no oil all this is dry there shouldn't be oil in there if there is oil it's normally that seal at the back there that's gone, that one that runs on the camshaft. 
but uh, it, uh, you shouldn't really get oil leaking up through here. It's fairly impossible. What there is, there is a little rubber, rubber grommet that goes on this end to stop water getting in. But you shouldn't get oil in there. So feeding that wire through. Okay. And then uh, what we got, uh, okay, and it should be, right, let's have a look, okay, it says uh, fit it, mm -hmm. so we should have a little bit of wire coming out, not too much. And it shows you, we've got these three slots and it shows you the, uh, which slot, I see, yeah, it's slightly cut away there, can you see? Uh, and that's obviously, because that's where it goes over the wire. Oh, there we go, there. So that's the position and it says, leave about that much wire in the in the casing yeah it recommends leaving about that much wire there's i say that much i know that that because there's a diagram so hopefully that's about the same maybe maybe a bit more i think that's about right i think that's um to stop any you know if you have it people have it too tight basically and then it rips the wires out then what we need to do is we need to get the three pillar bolts that used to hold the uh, um points in and we put them in and we put them in in the middle position and that should be about right but if we put it in the middle position and then when we strobe it we can turn it slightly backwards or forwards to get fine a fine adjustment but if we've done it right it should stay in the middle okay uh, so what i'm going to do now is get the three pillar bolts and simply bolt it on and that is that is actually the main this part of the installation done okay so you've got the, the these pillar bolts as they're called and they just screw in there and they, they'll hold there's a wash on the end but they screw in and they'll hold this plate tight and then that's it and then we put the cover on it's done so that's that installation but of course what i can't do now i'm afraid i can't show you of course the uh, all the all, all the wiring but we've talked through the wiring and i think if you follow this diagram religiously you'll be okay number one number two remember that unfortunately the coloring of the wires is different to the coloring of our bikes so um Let's have a look. Positive, it's brown here, it should be red. Um, negative, green, uh, that was normally white. It will go to a white wire on our bike. That Don't forget that the, the three, the yellow, the red and the white go to the separate ignition coils. That you need, the, the other side goes to earth and you need a good earth both for the unit on the brown and for each coil. Okay, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You only have a bias resistor if you uh, have six volt coils, but if you keep the original 12 volts, you'll be fine. Okay, um, now for now, unfortunately, that's about all I can say, because of course I haven't got the rest of the bike. I can't do all this wiring for you. But, um, okay, it tells you then how to strobe it, because that's what, we, as soon as we get the engine running, oh, uh, and you can set it statically. You can check it statically, but obviously we need a battery really. And, and you've got a little LED light. Uh, so you can check the stat static, but it's always best because once you've done it with a strobe, then it's done. That's it, never ever needs to touch it again. And also just do it on 
number one cylinder and it's automatically set for number two and three and you know you do it once done then there is instructions there is a self test mode i've never really used it before but there is a button you can you can well i think you press the button there's a little where is it there's a, some little button here somewhere oh yeah that that test isn't a light that's a button i think you use a little you know like a paper clip type thing you know to press that in as as you turn the ignition on at the same time it tells you how to do it here and then it will perform a self test okay as it uh, hold down the test switch gently with the tip of a pen while switching on the power to ignition at the same time and then it you perform you know, two tests to make sure everything's working then there's a big troubleshooting guide which hopefully you won't need but it's you know common common faults and then above all I don't know where it is, but the, the other thing to do is to contact Steve. I've forgotten his surname. Um, but contact and direct at the factory, Stephen. I forgot his name. Um, but uh, I, I can't find a number here. <laughs> I think he's probably given up putting his number there, but you can find it on their website. Uh, email him. He'll do it. He'll email. He'll write to you by return of email, even though they're in Australia. So you might have to wait a few hours. But, uh, you know, he's very good at getting back to you. And so if you do have a problem and you can't solve it, I wouldn't sit there scratching your head. I wouldn't go on the, on the uh, Facebook and all that. I just get straight in touch with Steve and say, look, look and, he'll, and he'll sort it out. I'm sure he'll love me for saying that, but, you know, that's the best way of doing it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just put those pillar bolts in now and then we'll put the, the cover on and, uh, and we're done. Okay, uh, last thing I'm going to do is uh, to put the uh, triangular little cover plate over this timing aperture for now. The, uh, this triangular plate is held on with three screws. There are two, uh, two little short ones that go at the top. Then there's a longer one uh, which goes at the bottom. And I'm just trying to hold that so you can see it, which has got a, just see if I can hold it over the, it's got a point on it. Okay, it's a very sharp point that's the one that goes at the bottom and it goes at the bottom so that when you're timing it this pointer goes right up against that uh, uh, strobe mark that timing mark so you can get a dead accurate uh, uh, timing so that when you are strobe timing you just undo those top two screws let that hang down leave this bottom screw in position and uh, you can use the end the pointer to get an absolutely dead 100% accurate timing reading. Okay, it's got a little gasket on it. They do tend to leak from here. Um, now I haven't replaced the um, I haven't replaced this little triangular uh, sort of legend plate uh, to give us a bit of originality you know, um, whether or not I don't know whether that ruins the whole sort of polished effect or or indeed gives it some originality I don't know but I'm just leaving it for now then the owner they can just replace that if they want to put a, a, a uh, new plate on then they can you know, so two minute job okay there we go uh, um, okay so that's all on and uh, that's the initial sort of first fit if you like of the uh, electronic ignition sorted but of course one of the most important things is of course not to forget to remove this timing plug and and put the uh, put the actual original plug back in. You know, trying to kick the bike over or whatever with that plug in, uh, you're not going to get very far. Right, so uh, yeah, don't forget to take that back out. And obviously, we've got to put the uh, inspection covers back on. And in my case, uh, I'm going to put the uh, outer chain case cover back on because I've been using that to turn the engine forwards and backwards. Because of course, you can turn it forwards on the kickstart. But you can't turn it backwards. 
you know, normally you do that whole process with an engine in the frame. But um, anyway, oh, it's looking good, isn't it? Just realised, oh, oh, looking good. Just about finished. I'll, I'll just do the last few bits and, and we're done. Yeah, that's the uh, plug back in. And the last, last thing is this little uh, slightly uh, cone-shaped uh, rubber that I've just slid. I just slid over. You slide it up over the wire, and then I'm going to slide it in. It's going to sit in that hole just to prevent any water getting into the points cover. <laughs>